Hello everyone and welcome to another educational video by the Entropy System. I'm Kit. You may notice that our background is different and that is because we moved the cat tree behind the couch and we thought that would be fine, except it wasn't fine, it was super distracting because the cats kept climbing on it while we were filming. So this is what you'll see now. <laughs> Today I am going to talk about memories and containment. So memory is a really big deal when it comes to DID, not just because of like past repressed memories, but also memory day to day. So managing memory and all the complications that come with that with this disorder is really a team effort. So before I get into it, let me remind you of our team. In the inner world, the two that kind of run the show from behind the scenes are Jonathan, our memory holder, and Jacob, our gatekeeper. If you're curious as to what those mean, check out my video where I talk about altered jobs and titles. I explain it all there. Then we have the littles, Karen, who is five, me, six, Josh is an age slider who can be anywhere between three and 10. There's the two fairies, Mistletoe and myself. There's Daniel, our newcomer, Lido, and of course, Win. Our whole life is basically one giant puzzle. Each of us only gets a certain amount of pieces of that puzzle. And that's what shapes our individual personalities, our likes, our dislikes, our fears, our hopes, all of that. But because we only have those bits and pieces that can make things really confusing sometimes, like let's say one alter has only really, really good memories about uh, a certain person and another alter only has really, really bad memories about a certain person. So if they don't share that information with each other and with the rest of us, we don't know if we're hanging out with someone, you know, good who we've had a couple squabbles with or someone who's really, really toxic and we need to not hang out with. Managing memory just with day-to-day -day stuff is also a really, really big deal and can be a little tough sometimes. Daniel and myself have really, really good communication and connection with Wynn. So when we switch, she loses pretty much no detail whatsoever. She is able to see and hear and experience everything super, super clearly, you know, like almost as if she was also fronting. The littles are a little bit fuzzier. They are getting better, but because there's a lot of fear and there's that like age gap of, you know, how a five or a six year old would understand the world around them and not pick up all the details anyway, when Jacob fronts, when has almost no recollection, she is not able to pull up the sense of time. Um, and this is even during like controlled switches. Even though she knows the switch happened, Jacob has to tell her later, hey, this is what I did, this is who I talked to, this is what happened. When it comes to past memories, we look to Jonathan to help us out the most. He is, like I said, our memory holder. Um, and so what he does is he takes all of our uh, past memories, especially our trauma memories, and puts them into little color-coded balls uh, for each of us and puts them in a chest that he keeps privately. Um, and someone in the comments at one point was saying that, oh, that's just like inside out. And it kind of is, but you know, not on purpose. <laughs> when we do trauma work, we only ever do this with our therapist, so a mental health professional, because trauma work is kind of a big deal and, and not really something that anyone should, you know, brave alone. So when we're doing trauma work, we have sort of a system set up. So uh, whichever little is sharing their memory, uh, Jonathan will sit them on his lap and have the little colored memory ball and feed them that memory just a little bit at a time. And they will relay what they are remembering to win. So she's not seeing the memory firsthand, but she's hearing the little tell the story of what they're remembering. We do that until the little feels that they are at their like emotional stop point because we don't want to re-traumatize the littles. So, you know, we let them make the call. Okay, I can't remember this anymore. I need to stop. Jonathan removes that memory from the little's brain, puts it back in the ball and goes and contains it. At that point, Wynn has the memory of what the little said. So she has sort of you know, a, a document of what happened, um, but not the emotions that with, with the memory, because those emotions belong to the littles. The littles don't remember the memory because Jonathan took it. And so it's kind of this like really complicated uh, structure to make sure that Wynn can get the puzzle pieces of her life and kind of know what happened during those big chunks that she just doesn't remember, uh, but also not be so overwhelmed with experiencing 
all the memories firsthand again and you know becoming an emotional mess and not being able to function. Not all memories can be designated to just one altered though. Some memories were so big that it just sort of went to everyone. It was just out there in the mind and it attached to you know whoever. There was one memory that me was relaying to a therapist and it was from a time when Wynne was three years old. Now me wasn't born until when was six. That's why me is six. So we were really confused as to why me had access to this memory from when when was three. And the therapist told us that memory is just a really odd thing and sometimes memory just goes out. It's not always something that can be designated and assigned to certain things. You know, memory is nuts. <laughs> uh, and, and so we just have to deal with that too. And Jonathan does his best to contain those um, when they pop up, when he finds them. Uh, obviously he's not perfect and you know some of those still slip through, but he's getting a lot better and we're getting a lot better at seeing them coming and being like, hey, we are not in a place where we can delve into this super emotional thing. Jonathan, will you help us out? Lastly, I want to get into containment. So Jonathan, as I explained, keeps the memory balls in a chest where only he can find it, only he can access it. And containment is something that is practiced in really uh, just about any trauma disorder. Before Wynne knew that we existed, she was taught to do containment for her PTSD from adult traumas. The purpose of containment is to say, I am not in a place where it is safe for me to delve into this memory right now. So I am going to put this away and come back to it later. It is not just burying something and never facing it and hoping that you don't have to ever look at it again. Because if you stuff that stuff down and you don't come back to it and you don't address it and process it in a healthy way, it's gonna eat away at you. Like it's gonna destroy you. You know, it's just like if you had this like nasty bag of trash and you just put it in the closet, you know, it's that smell is gonna seep out. You're gonna start getting rot and attracting, you know, rodents and bugs and like all sorts of mess like it's basically the same thing. So containment is for the purpose of not now but later, not uh, not now and not ever. <laughs> there is a downside to containment though. Jonathan has the memories, but you can't take away the emotions associated with the memories. Those stick no matter what. And so one of us might get triggered by something. We all have different triggers and triggers affect us all differently, but one of us might get triggered by something and we don't know why it triggered us. And Jonathan's like, I can't tell you cause it's not an okay time for that. So we have to do coping skills and stuff, but we don't know why we're doing the coping skills and stuff. And so that gets frustrating. And obviously we don't, you know, we're not perfect at this. Memories slip through. Nightmares is where it gets us the easiest. We'll wake up and we'll be like, oh great, that memory, thanks. But you know, we've had a lot of practice uh, over the past year and we've gotten pretty decent at it. I hope that helps you understand how memory works in the DID system. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We have new content every week, sometimes multiple times a week if we have time. Also hit us up on social media. We have Twitter, Tumblr, and Spotify. We made playlists for you all, so we have that now. Check it out, and I hope you all have a super, super great day. Mwah. Bye!